हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम अक्षय देश पांडे एंड वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी क्लास एंड आई विल बी योर बायोलॉजी टीचर सो टुडे वी विल गो विथ ए चैप्टर फ्रॉम यूर फर्स्ट ईयर और ऑल्सो क्लास एलेवन और पी यू वन दैट इज द सेल द यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ सो दिस चैप्टर मेनली कम्स फ्रॉम यूर सेल यूनिट एंड हीयर वी आर मेनली हैविंग थ्री इम्पॉर्टेंट चैप्टर्स द फर्स्ट इज द सेल वेर यू विल मेनली अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ सेल इट्स अ स्ट्रक्चर एंड द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द सेल एंड अलॉन्ग विथ यू विल ऑल्सो स्टडी द फंक्शंस ऑफ द सेलुलर कॉम्पोनेंट्स and in another chapter you will mainly study about the bio molecules which are mainly important for the formation of cellular uh, structures and also its functions and uh, finally in the last chapter of that particular unit that is cell unit you will also study about uh, the cell division and cell cycle right so uh, with these uh, three important chapters uh, we will mainly emphasize we will mainly start our discussion from the chapter called as the cell that is the unit of life so generally uh, when you look into the examination point of view for your uh, neat examination for your neat examination you will expect around two questions in general we can say that uh, you can see around uh, two questions for your neat examinations right yeah and uh, these two questions are generally associated with the functions okay mainly associated with the functions of uh, cell that is what you will mainly expect uh, in your examination okay so try to remember all the uh, functions of the cell okay and uh, as they are very much important so we will uh, start our discussion with a few important parts of the chapter which we call it as the synopsis yeah so now uh, if you look into the world our surroundings you will observe both the living and also the non living types okay so if you look into your surroundings uh, we observe both uh, there are certain things which are living and uh, there are also certain things that are that are non living right so now the first question that arises is uh, what makes an organism living okay is it uh, the uh, cells that makes us uh, living right so now if you try to give an answer for this particular question what makes an organism living if you try to ask this particular question we can say that it is the you know molecules it is basically the molecules that makes us living okay now what kind of molecules see uh, if you look into the cell structure okay if you look into the cell structure okay inside the cell none of the components none of the components are actually living are living which means that no component inside the cell is actually living okay all of them are actually bio molecules they are basically molecules all of them are actually molecules only right so no molecule molecules are basically chemicals right they are basically chemicals then how do these chemicals keep us living how do these uh, molecules keep us living right so now of course we will try to answer this question in your first chapter that is the living world but i can just give a small uh, what we can say answer over here that it is the interaction it is the interaction between the cells right it is mainly the interaction between the cells that actually keeps us living okay and also the interaction between the cells uh, is mainly because of the molecules the molecules that are present inside the cells okay they are actually involved in the interaction as a result we can say that they are actually living right because of the interaction between the cells through the help of molecules they are actually keeping us what they are keeping us uh, living this is what uh, we can actually make a small inference from this particular question okay so now uh, another statement you can look over here is that all of the living organisms are made up of cells right yes if you call any organism as a living okay if you say that anything is living it should be and must be made up of cells 
However, you also see certain exceptions to this rule. Exceptions. Okay. You also see certain exceptions to this rule and the exceptions mainly include the virus. Okay. They mainly include what? Virus. Now, virus are exceptions because they belong to the realm of uh, both uh, living okay, and also the non-living. We can say that uh, they are both living and also non-living. Right. So now what makes uh, the virus uh, say that it is actually living? Because if the virus gets inside the cell that is host, it can actually replicate. It can replicate or in the term, in, in other words, we can say that it can actually reproduce. Right. So the ability of reproduction or the replication of the virus, we can call it as actually living. Right. But however, without the host, OK, if there is uh, no host, the virus uh, cannot cannot reproduce. It cannot reproduce, right? So based upon this property, we can say that virus is actually non-living, right? If there is no host, if there is no cell for its reproduction or replication process, we can say that the virus is completely non-living in nature, right? So we can say that the virus uh, exhibits this particular exception that it uh, is not made up of any kind of cell. But however, uh, it is also made up of some biomolecules, it is also made up of uh, biomolecules that are also that are found found in uh, living cells they are also found in the living cells remember this right so they also say that the virus molecules or virus particles they also have biomolecules what do you mean by biomolecules for example proteins proteins carbohydrates carbohydrates okay lipids and your nucleic acids right so all of these molecules you find in the virus and not only you find in the virus the same biomolecules are actually also found inside your cells right so as the virus exhibit both the living and non living uh, property uh, but we cannot say firmly that virus is actually leaving but we cannot even rule out the property that it is completely non-leaving also right so we can say that um, all of the living organisms are actually made up of cells that is actually true but the exception mainly includes the virus right so now on this planet on our planet earth you also see that there are unicellular organisms and there are also the multicellular organisms now, what do we mean by unicellular organisms? The organisms which are made up of a single cells. Okay. Do we have any examples that are mainly made up of single cells? Ex exactly. We are having such as mainly the amoeba. A-M-O-E-B-A. -E amoeba. Right. And we are having uh, the protozoa. Proto so the paramecium, right? Trypanosoma, okay? Even the plasmodium. All of these are actually what? Made up of single cells. Bacteria okay bacteria right the prokaryotes they're all made up of what single cells at the same time you also see there are many uh, organisms majority of them are actually the multicellular organisms what do we mean by the multicellular organisms which means that they are made up of uh, many cells it is not a single celled organism they are mainly made up of uh, many cells that is what we mean by the term multicellular organisms right so i hope that we have understood the concept of what makes us living okay what makes an organism living it is mainly the interaction between the cells uh, makes us uh, actually leaving and interaction between the cells is mainly brought because of the molecules that are present inside the cells okay and uh, uh, there are also the organisms if we call them as leaving they are made up of cells exceptions mainly includes the viruses but however unicellular organisms uh, we are having that uh, we see that they are mainly made up of uh, single cells and multicellular organisms uh, are mainly made up of uh, many cells or multiple cells this is what we uh, have discussed till yet Right. So now let us look on to the uh, look on to the uh, another uh, 
concept that what do you mean by cell what actually cell means so let us erase this yeah so what is a cell right the first question is all organism we all know let just a moment ago we discussed that all living organisms are made up of cells that is true but however what is actually cell what does a cell actually mean right uh, on what basis we call that if anything can be called as cell on what basis we call it so the first basis is that it should exhibit an independent existence okay it should exhibit what independent existence so what do you mean by independent existence independent existence in the sense it can carry it can live it can live and uh, carry out the basic functions of living it should live okay it should be live okay and it should carry out all the basic functions of a living organism that is what we mean by the independent uh, existence right now and also we have on one more point that tells us that performing essential functions of life okay performing essential functions of life so what are the essential functions of life okay there are various various functions of life but however i will just list out a few over here the first is a metabolism okay metabolism okay now what do we mean by metabolism the reactions okay we mean by the term metabolism we mean by it that it is mainly the reactions okay so what kind of reactions the reactions that basically yield energy okay the reactions that uh, yield energy and also the reactions that are mainly involved in the formation formation of uh, new molecules the reactions that basically yield energy at the same time the molecules that are also involved in the form the reaction that are mainly involved in the formation of new molecules okay so these are what we call it as the reactions and hence the sum of all these reactions that is catabolism and anabolism will make us the metabolism right the next we are having is uh, division okay the next important property is the division anta heltivi okay so what do we mean by division that is a cell division okay we mean by the term cell division right so cell division we all know it is mainly the mitosis and one more we are having is the meiosis right so all these uh, cellular division reactions they should be occurring in the case of organisms okay so this is an essential function of life okay the ability to divide okay for the ability to have metabolic reactions conducting of these reactions we call it as an essential function right and finally we can also say that it is a reproduction okay the ability to reproduce and produce a progeny it is called as the uh, reproduction and one more is uh, for slow slow changes okay so there should be even slow changes and uh, slow changes we mean by the term it is evolution we mean by the term evolution okay so because of these slow changes what happens new organisms new organisms arise okay new organisms actually arise okay so and this new organisms uh, arising we call it as the species we call it by the term called as the species right so a reproduction is an essential function of life division is also an essential function of life metabolism we also call it as what an essential function of life so i hope we have made it uh, quite uh, clear that uh, what makes or on what basis we call it as a cell right so now uh, let us look into uh, some of the important events in the cell biology 
okay some important events in the cell biology okay uh, one of the uh, first person we have to credit that is uh, the anton von leeuwenhoek okay he was the person who actually described the living cell for the first time okay but however we also hear one more scientist called as the robert hook okay robert uh, hook now this uh, person is also a scientist who actually observed the cork cells and uh, coined the term that is the cell empty chambers he actually observed empty hexagonal chambers and these hexagonal chambers uh, were somewhat similar to that cells hence he called that called them as called them as cells okay but anton uh, von leeuwenhoek was the first person who described the living cell right and uh, one more scientist who uh, came quite later was the robert brown and he actually observed and discovered another structure that is the nucleus okay so we all now know that a nucleus is the main directing center of the cell okay uh, nucleus uh, we can say we can write over here mainly uh, controls uh, the cell functioning okay we we now know that a nucleus uh, basically uh, is involved in controlling the cell functioning and we actually classify the types of cells based upon the presence or absence of nucleus okay we do classify the cells based upon the presence or absence of the cells right now uh, we can also say that there is also one more event there is also one more event in the cell biology that is uh, the invention invention of uh, electron electron microscope okay because uh, the electron microscope was uh, invented what happened we could look the, look into the ultra structure of cell we can we could actually look into the ultra structure that is a more detailed structure detailed structure of the cell could be mainly identified was mainly observed and they were mainly studied right so invention of an electron microscope is also we consider it as a uh, important event in the cell biology okay so the invention of uh, we can say electron microscope microscope completely changed the cell biology rapidly in a short moment of time so now uh, we can start our discussion on one important concept in the cell biology which is a famous uh, theory called as the cell theory okay it is the doctrine we also call it as what a doctrine doctrine okay what do you mean by doctrine doctrine is something that is a standard it is well accepted there is no reason to uh, what we can say uh, denial okay we cannot reject the theory it is a standard theory that we are actually having okay and it is the cell theory the first and for more foremost uh, famous theory in the cell biology okay so now we we are actually we uh, we can see that there are two important scientists over here the first one we are having is the uh, matthias schleiden okay he was actually a german botanist and one more we are having is the theodor schwann okay and this person was basically a british zoologist okay so these two people were the involved in the formation of a cell theory initially okay initially okay in the beginning stages these people these two guys were the uh, people who uh, formulated the cell theory for the first time okay and they formulated the cell theory based upon few important observations they actually did okay so what were their observations for example schleiden uh, mainly observed that plants are mainly formed of cells and these cells basically involved in the formation of tissues okay so how do we define a tissue uh, tissue can be defined as uh, it is the group of cells that are basically uh, having a same function okay same uh, function similar or uh, same origin okay having same function similar origin and also same structure okay any group of cells 
that are having a same function, similar origin, same structure, we call them as what? Tissues. Okay, so plants are basically formed of uh, cells. Okay, and uh, these uh, amalgamation, conglomeration of cells are basically involved in the formation of tissues. Okay, so this was a very important observation done by the Matthias Schleiden, who was a German botanist. Now, later, another scientist, that is the Theodor Schwann, uh, he observed that cell, animal cells, especially animal cells, they are having a thin outer delimiting layer, okay? If you look into the diagram of any cell, how you draw cell, okay? We always draw a cell with a large big circle and we also draw one more small circle inside over here and uh, we give a dark shading for this, okay? This is how we draw the cell, right? Ah, So now... Schwann identified or observed that every cell, animal cell, is having an outermost uh, delimiting layer or a thin layer, okay, thin uh, layer, right? And now we know that this thin layer is actually called as the plasma membrane, right? So we will be studying about the structure of the plasma membrane in more detail shortly in the upcoming classes, right? So it is mainly about the thin layer called as the plasma membrane. Right now, Schwann also considered the plant cells. He also wanted to know like how do the plant cells are observed or what is the difference between the plant cells and the animal cells. He interestingly found that in, even in the case of plant cells, they are having an extra structure, okay, which is more rigid, okay. And this rigidity is mainly involved in the formation of what? Uh, the conferring the uh, shape and structure to the plant cells. Okay. And this rigid structure is mainly called as the cell wall. Okay. So it was uh, Schwann who actually observed that uh, animal cells are having a outer uh, thin layer. And now we call this thin layer as what? The plasma membrane. Okay. But at that time he did not say it as plasma membrane. We now know that it is actually the plasma membrane, right? And he also observed in the case of plant cells that they are having uh, another structure called as the cell wall, right? Yes. So, um, Schleiden and Schwann were the people who actually proposed the cell theory initially, okay? And uh, they formulated the cell theory based on, based on important observations right and those observations were as we have mentioned over here plants are basically formed of uh, cells that uh, these cells mainly form the tissues and uh, Schwann observed that animal cells are having a thin outer layer which we now know as the plasma membrane and plants are actually having a what a rigid structure called as the cell wall. So these were the two important observations uh, which were mainly used for the formation of this cell theory initially, right? Now, uh, what is the conclusion that we can derive over here, right? We can erase this over here, right? Yeah. So the conclusion that we can derive is that uh, plant cells actually have a cell wall which is a completely unique character and this character is mainly found in the case of plant cells. Okay, yes. Of course, we now have identified many living organisms that also have uh, plant uh, cell wall. Okay, like that of plant cells. We also now know that there are many other living organisms which also have this cell wall. Okay, but though they have cell wall, it doesn't mean that the chemical nature or chemical composition of the plant cell wall is similar to the cell wall of uh, those organisms. Remember that point. Right now. Animals and plants are made up of uh, cells and uh, cellular products, okay? So here, this is quite an important point. You, you students have to remember this, okay? You students have to remember this, that plants are uh, made up of uh, animals and plants are made up of uh, cells and they are mainly made up of the cellular products. Cellular products. So these were some of the important observations uh, done by or the conclusions that we can derive from the cell theory proposed by Schleiden and Schwann. Now, but however, there was one problem with, uh, with their theory who they had actually proposed initially, okay? And that uh, problem was uh, they did not know how do the new cells actually come into existence, okay? How did the new cells arise? New cell arose 
where do these new cells actually come from so this was an important question that uh, the initial proposed theory of uh, cell was not answering it okay it was not completely uh, answerable by Schleiden and Schwann now this was actually uh, approached this problem was basically uh, solved by a scientist called as a Rudolf Virchow in 1855 okay in 1855 he actually uh, came up uh, with uh, a modification okay he came up with a modification to the cell theory okay and he said that cells actually divide and uh, these uh, new cells are mainly formed from the pre-existing new cells pre-existing new cells so this was a very bold proposition given by Rudolf Virchow so he said that there is one cell okay and this cell divides into two cells okay yes so if you ask the origin of these two cells where did these two cells come from these two cells uh, came from the original existing cell and this is the original existing cell this is what uh, Rudolf Virchow meant okay so all cells actually divide and these uh, new cells are mainly formed formed from the pre-existing uh, cells okay and he actually expressed this idea with a very famous phrase called as the omnis cellula e cellula right so this is uh, one of the most commonly asked uh, question in your neat examination who uh, gave the phrase omnis cellula e cellula right one of the uh, well-known uh, phrase that you have studied since your uh, biology so now we can say that uh, Rudolf Virchow modified the cell theory okay he was the person who actually modified the cell theory okay and what were the modifications he done uh, to the theory and what do we know about this theory as of now uh, we can say that uh, all the living organisms are made up of cells and products of cells okay all the living organisms if we are using the term living organism it means that they are mainly made up of cells and uh, the products of cells only they are made up of second thing is the point that we have just studied that is all cells arise from the pre-existing cells okay all uh, arise all cells arise from the pre-existing cells they do not arise spontaneously remember this point okay yeah so generally in your neat examinations you will expect two types of questions okay uh, match the following match the following type of questions and also one more type of questions you may expect or generally you see in your examination is a correct uh, that is uh, choose the correct or incorrect statement okay so these are the most uh, common type of questions that you people uh, ex you know experience in your neat examination see in your neat examination okay so see generally what happens is that if they directly ask you the concept based questions okay what is this what is that kind of question you will obviously answer okay but uh, what they do is that based on one particular concept they ask you that which of the following statement is true which of the following statement is not true okay so if they ask in that particular way you have to read all the concept all the concepts should be studied okay you cannot escape from this you have to study the concept thoroughly okay though you may expect one or two questions from this particular chapter but they will make sure that uh, they will cover maximum part in that one particular question okay so don't expect it to be uh, direct or simple based questions okay so yeah we will uh, try to solve some previously uh, you know asked questions from your uh, neat examinations also uh, anyway we shall uh, proceed uh, further now overview of cells okay so now let us uh, try to look into the cell overview okay so now 
uh, if you look into the plant uh, cells, uh, they are actually having the cell wall. Okay, we have discussed that, right? So plants have a unique property, unique uh, character, that is uh, they exhibit the cell wall. But whereas in the case of animal cells, they do not have any kind of cell wall, but instead they exhibit directly the plasma membrane. Okay, they do not have uh, no cell wall, they do not have a cell wall. Right? So remember this particular point. The second is both the cells have a dense structure. Okay, that is the nucleus. So as I said, right, so here I have drawn the diagram of cell. Okay, and we draw in this way, right? Always we draw a structure like this inside. And this structure we are referring to none other than the nucleus. Okay, so we know that a nucleus is the structure that basically has the chromo chromosomes we know that it mainly contains the chromosomes and chromosomes is the one that basically contains the genetic material of the living organism that is the dna right so dna is the genetic material in the case of chromosomes or any living organism okay there are exceptions to this rule okay and uh, in some cases, mainly examples include the viruses where even RNA is also genetic material, okay? An example for this we are having is the HIV, which actually has RNA as the genetic material also, okay? So now, chromosomes mainly contain the genetic material, which is mainly compacted. Remember, okay? It is a compactly arranged. We will study about the structure of the chromosome in the last part of this particular chapter in more detail. Right? Yes. So we know that uh, the nucleus mainly contains the genetic material that is the DNA that is a deoxyribonucleic acid. Right? So we will study about the DNA more in detail in the biomolecules chapter. So let us not discuss those points over here. So the next one we are having is uh, the classification of the cells. So just a moment ago, I had even said that based upon the presence or absence of nucleus, we actually classify the cells. Right? So now uh, you can see that if the nucleus is actually present, if you see the presence of this uh, dark structure that is a nucleus, then we say that uh, it is actually a eukaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells are way more advanced and well developed cells than those cells which do not have the nucleus that is the nucleus is absent and we call these cells as the prokaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells mainly includes the bacteria remember okay bacteria and these prokaryotic cells are generally unicellular Okay, but in the case of eukaryotic cells, you find both type of cells, or both type of organisms. I mean, uh, that is uh, unicellular orga organisms. Also, you do find, and also the multicellular organisms. Also, you do find in the eukaryotes. But in the case of prokaryotes, you find strictly only unicellular organisms. An example for prokaryote we have mentioned that is the bacteria, right? The next one. Uh, Irrespective of the cells, that is maybe eukaryote or maybe prokaryote, both kind of cells have a fluid-filled matrix. We refer them as the cytoplasm. We call it as what? Cytoplasm. And uh, in the case of eukaryotic cells, you find organelles, okay? And these organelles are generally membrane-bound. They are basically what? Membrane bound okay it, it means that they are mainly made up of uh, made of uh, membranes they are mainly made up of what membranes right so this is we are having organelles and uh, organelles mainly include the next one the first one that is the endoplasmic reticulum okay endoplasmic reticulum is mainly involved in uh, compartmentalization of uh, the cytoplasm the next one we are having is the Golgi apparatus or also called as the Golgi complex, okay? Yes. The next one we are having is the lysosomes, okay? One of the most and well-known you know about lysosomes, they are popularly called as the suicide bag of the cells, okay? Yes, because they mainly contain the hydrolytic enzymes. Now, uh, at the same time, uh, we have also heard the, uh, you know, another uh, organelle called as the mitochondria, uh, that is uh, the powerhouse of the cells the next one we are having is the micro bodies and one more is the vacuoles small bubble like structures okay uh, cavity like structures present inside the cells 
you also find a common structure between the uh, prokaryotes and also the eukaryotes so this structure is found in both the prokaryotes and also the eukaryotes and this structure we are speaking of is mainly the ribosomes ribosomes see uh, both prokaryote or eukaryote they are mainly found but uh, Although the function is same, the main function of the ribosome is mainly what? The synthesis uh, of uh, proteins, okay? Formation or synthesis of proteins is mainly done by the ribosomes, okay? But however, there is some structural difference between the ribosomes of the prokaryote and the eukaryote. But it is a common structure that you find in both prokaryote and eukaryote and also the function is same. Remember this. So, along with this, you also find one more uh, uh, organelle called as the chloroplast. I have mentioned about the mitochondria earlier. Okay. So, we also find one more structure uh, exclusively found in the case of uh, plant cells, that is the chloroplast. Commonly, we call this as the plastids. Plastids. Right. And uh, one more structure. Okay, that is uh, called as the centrosomes. Remember, centrosome is uh, a non-membrane, non-membrane structure. Okay, for example, organelles, organelles that are mainly made up of membranes, except ribosomes and the centrosomes. Okay, they are uh, non-membrane structures non-membrane structures and uh, the centrosomes are exclusive structures that is they are not found anywhere else except in the case of eukaryotes they are mainly found exclusively found in the case of eukaryotes right yes so now let us look into the uh, cell size okay so we all know uh, there is you know cells mainly come in different type of size and also the shapes there is no you know hard and fast rule that every you know every cell should come in this particular size and shape okay there is no constant size and shape among the cells in the whole planet so now uh, for example uh, the smallest recorded uh, living organism that is cell is a micro mycoplasma okay mycoplasma which is having a 0.3 mu m okay the symbol is in this way okay that is a micrometers 0.3 mu m right and in the case of bacteria the typical structure uh, the typical size mainly is around uh, length is around uh, 3 to 5 micrometers okay 3 to 5 uh, micrometers remember this right and uh, the largest cell we know is basically the ostrich egg okay it is a single cell ostrich egg is actually the single cell and it is the largest cell and uh, human rbcs are known to have a length of around uh, seven micrometers the longest cell in the length wise if you see we are having the nerve cells okay that is uh, the cell that is mainly involved in the formation of nervous system okay and uh, we also know about one more organism uh, that is a uh, pplo pplo pleuropneumonia like organisms okay so these organisms are known to have a size of around 0 0.1 micrometers okay if you consider viruses for example virus they exhibit a, a size of around 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 micrometers see how tiny these organisms are okay they are way 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 more smaller than your uh, the any living organisms okay yes so now let us look into the shapes Okay, let us look into what? Shapes. See, the general shapes that you see are the disc-like, polygonal, okay? And next one we are having is the columnar, uh, cuboidal, and sometimes there may be no specific shape. We call it as what? Irregular, okay? So, for example, trachids. Trachids are basically the water-conducting elements. Water-conducting elements. Okay, and they are having elongated shape. For example, one more we are having is the mesophyll cells, which are mainly involved in the photosynthesis. They are having a round and oval shape. The next one we are having is a branched and long uh, cells are mainly the nerve cells in the nervous system. Amoeboid shape. Okay, amoeboid andre, it looks like wiggly in this way. 
amoeba okay amoeba is completely irregular right hence we call it as amoeboid shape and white blood corpuscles or white blood cells mainly show the uh, amoeboid shape biconcave and round shaped you see mainly in the case of uh, rbc that is the red blood cells or the red blood corpuscles if they are a thin elongated and a narrow long like structure okay these are mainly columnar epithelial cells okay columnar epithelial cells we mainly uh, study them uh, in the uh, we have heard about them mainly in the intestine right they are mainly involved in the secretions we all know about that so these are some of the important points that we have discussed uh, in this particular class so we will begin our discussion with a few important questions from this part that we have actually discussed right so let's start with the uh, first question we will erase this over here yeah so what is the first question tells us what makes an organism living okay uh, metabolism interaction between the molecules and next one we are having is the formation of a new cellular products the last option we are having is the all of the above okay so if you remember from the discussion you can just go back to the first part of the uh, first part of the video okay and you can see that we have mentioned three important properties that is metabolism ability to reproduce okay formation of a uh, new cellular products okay how dalva uh, see the third statement you may find not relevant formation of a uh, new cellular products for example a cell will divide to give us two cells right so these two cells are derived from where an existing cell okay an existing cell and these two cells are product of a cell only hence uh, we can say that even formation of new cellular products is also uh, organism living okay so metabolism interaction between the molecules and the cells and uh, the formation of new cellular products okay all the three are actually we can say the property of an living organism or it makes an organism living so hence the right answer over here is d okay all of the above is our right answer yes so let us move on uh, to another question which of the following statements about uh, the cell is uh, true cells do not show independent existence performing vital functions of life fundamental unit of a living organisms that have nucleus only okay and anything less than st uh, structure of cell does ensure independent uh, living okay so which of the following statements about the cell is true they are asking mainly about uh, the statement about uh, cell is true should be true okay cells do not show independent existence so if you look into the first part of our of our discussion we have mentioned that we specifically told that cells must have independent existence they must have right if they don't have independent existence they cannot survive right next performing vital functions of life essential functions we have mentioned essential functions right so essential functions or vital functions all mean the same okay all mean the same right so the b statement is actually true over here the b statement is actually true fundamental unit of living organisms that have a nucleus only see there are some uh, cells which do not have nucleus that is mainly prokaryote though they don't have nucleus don't you think they are also living organism exactly even they are also living organisms so hence we can say that uh, this uh, statement is not true a is not a true the next is anything less than a structure of a cell does ensure the independent living right see according to this statement anything less than structure of cell right so we have discussed mainly about the cell structure okay overview of cell if there is something less than that of what we have discussed part of cell it means that still it can live as an independent organism the statement is not true okay if there is something less than the general structure of cell whatever this whatever we have discussed about the overview of cell if any one part or any one component is missing it cannot live independently okay so hence uh, the third uh, fourth statement is also false not true so we can say that uh, b statement is actually the 
ट्रू ओके परफॉर्मिंग वाइटल फंक्शन ऑफ लाइफ इज अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट अबाउट दि से नौ मूविंग ऑन विच लेंसेस इन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप आर यूज टू कंट्रोल एंड फोकस ओके सो कॉन्वेक्स लेंस कॉन्केव लेंस इलेक्ट्रिक लेंस मैग्नेटिक लेंस ओके सो हियर इन द केस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप यू डो नॉट सी यू डो नॉट सी एनी काइंड ऑफ अ ग्लास लेंस ओके इफ यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर फिजिक्स ओके जनरली यू विल स्टडी अबाउट द लेंस and lens maker formula okay i'm not a physics teacher but you know at least i remember from my classes that uh, generally all the you know lenses are mainly uh, are made up of glass okay but however electron microscope they are exceptions to this particular rule okay because electron microscope mainly uses uh, electron beams electron beams instead of instead of uh, visible light instead of visible light and these electron beams uh, behave like light only okay they behave like light right remember this okay and the bending or controlling the path of the electrons can be done by electromagnetic lens electro magnetic lens okay so it is not the electric lens it is not the concave lens or it is not the convex lens it is mainly the magnetic lens so d is our right answer over here right i hope i have made the points uh, quite uh, clear over here now uh, moving on the structural details of the cell and ultra structure of cells have been studied by the auto radiography next is a phase contrast microscope electron microscope uh, x ray diffraction method okay so we have discussed the ultra structure means the most detailed structure of cell okay it is only possible to study such ultra structure of cell with the help of electron microscope only so hence c is our right answer phase contrast microscope is mainly used to study the live cells okay and it is based upon uh, uh, visible light only okay so hence this is wrong auto radiography is mainly used to localize uh, localize some important uh, proteins or biomolecules so that is not uh, the right answer x ray diffraction method is mainly used to study the biomolecules mainly the dna okay if you remember from your uh, molecular basis of inheritance you have studied mainly the x ray diffraction for the structure of dna okay that is uh, as you people have studied so x ray diffraction is also wrong so the right answer over here is the electron microscope the next question a very simple question who proposed uh, cell theory that is uh, schleiden and schwann watson and crick morgan and mendel robert hooke the answer we all know it is the uh schleiden and schwann a is our right answer the next question uh, which of the following is an exception to the cell theory that is uh, bacteria fungi lichen virus we know we have discussed in the first part itself okay all living organisms are made up of cells the exception mainly include the viruses right virus is an exception to the cell theory now which of the following is it true okay uh, schleiden observed that uh, pa plants have a cell wall schwann observed that animals have an outer layer and uh, plants have a cell wall omnicellular e cellula was introduced by schwann initial the cell theory formulated by schleiden and schwann explained cell formation okay so now the following statement is true they are mainly asking about which of the following statement is true see the first statement tells us that uh, schleiden observed that the plants uh, have a cell wall no it was mainly the schwann who observed that plants have cell wall okay so hence it is a not a true statement schwann observed that uh, animals have outer layer and uh, plants have uh, a cell wall exactly this statement is the true statement b is our true answer over here omnicellular e cellula was introduced by schwann no it was done by the rudolf okay rudolf virchow 
This guy was was the one who introduced it. So C is a wrong statement. Initial cell theory formulated by Schleiden and Schwann explained the cell formation. That is a new cell arises. Okay, that was mainly done by Rudolf Virchow. Again, the same guy does uh, does this work, right? So again, uh, D is a wrong answer over here. So the right answer we are having is uh, B. That is uh, Schwann observed that uh, animals have outer cell, outer layer, and plants have cell wall right so let's uh, look into next question the presence of a thin outline in uh, animal cells observed by Schwann is now known as endoplasmic reticulum vacuole cell wall plasma membrane okay I cannot uh, I cannot write over here but uh, we all know it is a uh, D okay so D is our right answer that is plasma membrane Okay, so Schwann mainly observed that uh, animal cells have an outer thin layer and this thin layer is none other than the plasma membrane, right? So we have discussed this point. Just uh, recall the discussions. Now, uh, cells divide and arise from a pre-existing cell was the observation made by Rudolf Virchow, Matthias Schleiden, okay? Theodore Schwann and one more we are having is the Robert Hooke. The answer we all know it is the Rudolf Virchow. He was the scientist who actually uh, made the proposition that uh, the cells, new cells actually come into existence from the pre-existing cell only. Right? So hence A is our right answer over here. Now, which of the following is not true about this cell theory? Okay? Cells uh, uh, make the living organism uh, all living organisms are made up of uh, products of cells okay cell arise uh, all cells arise spontaneously and Rolf Virchow modified the cell theory okay so they are mainly asking the statement is not true in the sense it is incorrect statement Okay, they are mainly asking the statement which is not a true or incorrect statement. Okay, we know that actually Rudolf Virchow modified the cell theory. It is actually a true statement. Okay, so he made those uh, statement that is uh, all uh, new cells uh, arise from the pre-existing cells. Okay, that is a modification done by the Rudolf Virchow. We know that. Next, all cells arise spontaneously. Spontaneously means like that. De novo. Okay, spontaneously in the sense de novo. Okay, they can just arise by themselves. That is not true. All cells actually arise from the pre-existing cells, right? So hence, uh, this statement is not true. We know this. The next one, the B statement is actually what? All living organisms are made up of products of cells. Exactly, a true statement. And... Uh, Cells uh, make the living organism, it is also a true statement. But the not a true statement or false statement or incorrect statement we are having is C option, all the cells arise spontaneously. That is the wrong statement. Hence, C is our answer. Now, which of the following is absent in the prokaryotes? Okay, DNA, RNA, plasma membrane, mitochondria. The answer is uh, mitochondria, right? Mitochondria is an organelle that is a membrane-bound organelle that is uh, exclusively found in the case of uh, eukaryotes. You don't find this structure in the case of prokaryotes, right? Hence, so you find DNA both in uh, prokaryotes and also uh, in the case of eukaryotes. RNA, you also find them, right? And even uh, the plasma membrane is also found in the case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, but uh, absent, an exclusive structure found in the case of uh, eukaryotes, that is the mitochondria. Now, the absence of dark structure, dark dense structure, okay? They are mentioned as the dark dense structure in the cell indicates that... Uh, Golgi apparatus, the centrosome, vacuole, nucleus. Okay, so they have mainly asked which is the dense structure that is absent. That is a D. Nucleus is basically absent. In the cell indicates it is mainly the nucleus that is absent. Okay, vacuole is not true. Centrosome is not true. Golgi apparatus is also not true. The next question. 
the main arena for the cellular activities is the endoplasmic reticulum cytoplasm nucleus vacuole the answer is the cytoplasm okay so we know that uh, the living reactions that is a metabolic uh, metabolic reactions all of these metabolic reactions actually occur where in the cytoplasm only right hence we call it that it is the main ground or the arena where all these cellular activities actually takes place okay so hence we also say that it is the cytoplasm that mainly keeps the cell in the living state okay it is cytoplasm that keeps the cell in the living state why is cytoplasm is important for keeping the cell in the living state because it is the arena or it is the place where the cellular activities what do you mean by cellular activities the replic uh, not, not not replication uh, mainly the translation and metabolic reactions okay mainly the metabolic reactions are occurring in the cytoplasm okay so yeah so b is our right answer that is cytoplasm now which of the following is a non membrane structure uh, that is uh, present in uh, both uh, prokaryote uh, and eukaryote okay that is uh, a ribosome centrosome inclusion bodies food vacuoles okay the answer we know it is mainly the ribosome right so ribosome is mainly involved in what a protein uh, synthesis we have discussed this right and it is completely a non membrane structure ribosome is mainly made up of rna okay and this special kind of rna we call it as what r rna that is ribosomal rna right yes so it is a non membrane structure centrosome we have discussed about centrosome also but however it is mainly a what eukaryotic uh, structure okay it is not a prokaryotic structure but inclusion bodies is an exclusive prokaryotic prokaryotic okay we will study about the inclusion bodies function later on and next is food vacuoles you find vacuole like structures both in uh, prokaryote and also eukaryote right so according to the question the only structure which is found in uh, both prokaryote and eukaryote that is the what ribosomes let us recall this remember this now which of the following has organelles have ribosomes which of the following organelles have ribosomes okay so they are mainly asking about those structures even cell organelles that have the ribosomes the course options are mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria and nucleus chloroplast and mitochondria a prokaryote and eukaryote okay so you know the answer it is very simple it is a chloroplast and the mitochondria okay even these two structures cell organelles even they are also having the ribosomes right uh, nucleus does not have and endoplasmic reticulum does not also have the ribosomes okay so prokaryote and eukaryote are mainly your uh, cells right yeah so chloroplast and uh, mitochondria uh, i think uh, if i'm not wrong it is a 70 years i think okay it is mainly the 70 years or 55 years something like that okay i don't remember 55 years or uh, 70 years okay we'll just uh, discuss that elaborately in uh, the further classes anyway let's move on to the uh, next question which of the following is not true mitochondria is a double membrane structure chloroplasts are found only in plants okay and uh, prokaryotes lack membrane bound organelles ribosomes are the only non membrane structures in the eukaryotes the not true they have mainly asked about the statement which is not true the answer we are having is d ribosomes are the only non membrane structures in the eukaryotes this is a not a true statement because apart from ribosomes you also find uh, centrosomes right so even you find centrosomes uh, in the uh, eukaryotes which are also the non membrane structures which mainly help the cell for cell division right they mainly help for the cell division let's remember this important point so hence the right answer we are having is uh, d d is our right answer yeah moving on 
Uh, the smallest living uh, cell is bacteria, mycoplasma, RBC, and one more we are having is the egg of the ostrich. Egg of the ostrich is mainly the largest living cell. RBC and bacteria are quite big in size, okay? But however, in the in the case of uh, smallest living cell, it is mainly the mycoplasma. And one more we are having is the PPLO. Of course, it has not been given in the option, but the right answer we can say that it is mainly the mycoplasma, okay? Yes. The next question we are having is, uh, which of the following cells are long and branched, okay? So, mesophyll cells, uh, RBC, and nerve cells, columnar cells. We know the answer is uh, nerve cells because columnar cells are mainly long and narrow and RBCs are mainly uh, biconcave, biconcave, and uh, the last one we are having is the mesophyll cells which are mainly the round and uh, oval. Columnar cells, we know, as I uh, said, that is uh, narrow and uh, long. We have, we have mentioned it, right? Long. So, the right answer we are having is the nerve cells. Nerve cells are mainly what? Long and branched. The next question. Which of the following statement is true? Uh, per, uh, the functions of the cell vary according to the function they perform. And uh, the white blood uh, cells are amoeboid in shape, okay? The largest single cell is uh, ostrich egg. Last one we are having is the all of the above, okay? So here there should be small modification. The function of cells vary according to the size, okay? So there is a small typo error, I guess. It is mainly the size, okay? The functions of cells vary according to the size. And... Uh, Next is we are having is the white blood cells are mainly abimbod in shape. It is also true. The largest single cell is the ostrich, all of the above. The right answer is all of the above. The functions of the cells vary according to the size and shape of the cells. And uh, WBC, we know they are mainly amoeboid in shape. And largest single cell we are having is the ostrich egg. The next question, uh, identify the mismatch. Uh, RBC, round and bi bi biconcave. Columnar epithelial cells, round and oval, tracheid, elongated, bacteria, uh, 3 to 5 mu m in length. Okay, so we know the mismatch we are having is B because the epithelial cells, that is the columnar epithelial cells are mainly long and narrow but never round and oval. Okay, round and oval we are having the example of uh, the mesophyll cells. Mesophyll cells are mainly round and oval, right? Yes. So, uh, in this particular part, we have discussed some of the important questions. And uh, you may expect one question from here also, okay, in this particular part of the chapter. So, you people can start uh, solving some important questions from this particular chapter, okay? So, we will also look into some of the appeared uh, questions, previously appeared questions from your NEET examinations, okay? That we will do at the end of the chapter. Okay, don't worry about it. So, we will meet in the next class with uh, the same chapter, with the uh, next part of the chapter. Uh, till then, solve questions, start solving questions and uh, thank you.